the switch kit is a nice, <laughs> the great advertising and the nice packaging of this kit, enough to outweigh some of the drawbacks of kind of maybe some questionable electronics and performance stats. So first thing I just want to show the switch kit, front hub motor kit. This is the battery right here. This little beauty goes on this bracket here on your handlebars. Couldn't be easier to disengage. That just pops off. And here's your battery. I'll put the weight on the screen right now, but it is light and it's just super well made. Um, it just, it's clean. It has a real nice look to it. All these parts of the kit the same way. I mean, you can just see, I was able to put that in one hand. Um, I opted for the upgraded OLED display and I also went with a thumb throttle. So those were a little upgrade add-on on the price. I did get this on a pre-order. I ordered like, um, it took me like four months to get this thing after I ordered it. So I waited my sweet time um, and I've waited even longer to provide this review. So I have some good use with it to share with you. The other parts of the kit down here, um, it's a, it's a front hub motor kit, right? You see right there, it says switch. This is a 20 inch wheel. This is a 36 volt, 250 watt kit. So this is not intended to be a high performance kit. It's intended to be a low weight uh, commuter solution. I'm just gonna dive right in and talk about the installation of this. I'm gonna set this down for that. I'd love to put in a clip of the video from Switch right now where it basically just shows you pulling up your wheel, spinning your old wheel off and dropping your front wheel on. It's not that easy, folks. It never is on a front motor kit. Um, and primarily that is because of the size of the dropouts, which are the holes where the axle needs to go into. This right here. Now, if you had a bike that had a bolted on front axle, you might be able to slide this right in. If you're coming from a bike like this one was, it had a quick release front hub, you are going to have to file your dropouts out to accommodate the, the wider dropouts of the switch kit. So if you're squeamish about that, I understand. I used a Dremel, still took some time. I mean, it probably took me a num it probably took me three or four hours to actually get this kit installed. But yeah, once you get the motor on there, you're golden. Um, I had to put my um, disc brake rotor on there. So you need to use the disc brake rotor from your current wheel. Sometimes that can be a little challenging. Um, I actually had to re-space my uh, caliper because uh, where it sat in relation to the wheel was slightly different than it was on the switch hub. So you can see right there, hopefully you can see there, there's, there's two washers. Um, on my bike originally, these washers were on the inside of the mount. Um, so I had to play with that spacing to get it so I could actually get a good adjustment on my brakes. But you can see there, it's pretty clean. Um, you know, I, did, I used the zip ties that came with it, which aren't the nicest zip ties. These Cobra ties really clean up your look. Um, and I'm just going to talk about the cadence sensor really quick here. So it's kind of a fun uh, style of cadence sensor. It sticks here. There's also a place where you can uh, use an extra zip tie in here if you needed to. And then it just has a number of zip ties and a number of different options for different types of cranks. So you're going to be able to get this to work on your bike. It's just gonna, you, there's a bunch of different options in the manual. You just had to find which one works best for your style of crank. Um, this is a little bit finicky in here. I haven't really had any issues with it, but it all is that one that it's a, if you find your uh, pedal assist isn't working properly, it's probably something in here got bumped. I, I'm just gonna take a real quick second to talk about the functionality of the display. Um, you can see here on the battery, you have some five bars of battery indicator. Um, I'm uh, probably uh, six miles into a ride right now. And this is actually down about two batteries once I'm under power. Um, you can see here, there's a battery indicator on the screen. These don't match, they never match. I feel like this one is actually more accurate. One tap kind of gets you to your ability to change your pedal assist mode. And so see one tap, you see each of the P modes are different pedal assist modes uh, goes from zero, which in pedal assist mode zero, there is no throttle available. And pedal assist one, and here there is, then we have throttle, and it's supposed to be 60% of your top speed. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the electronics and as far as the speed brakes when we're riding. And to get, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how you get into the menu. You hold this until it's just the Bluetooth button is showing on the screen, like right there. 
the first setting is miles per hour to kilometers. You might have saw that there. Two clicks changes between. This is your wheel size. That is your speed. Goes up to it's in kilometers, so 32 kilometers is the top speed. So I'm gonna have this turned all the way up. All right, so we're in our lowest assist level, and we're at about 15 miles per hour. I'm just spinning my legs enough that I'm making contact with the cadence sensor, not the pedals. Um, you can see there, the three, there's four lights on the battery and it's actually down to one bar in the display. So I just moved to pedal assist mode two. So we're gonna see where we're at. So a little faster here, just switch the three. Small bump in speed though, because of the 250 watt motor, like with the wind in your face, like I have a little bit right now, uh, you definitely get a, you can't counteract the wind with the motor. Pedal assist four. So I'm topping out in top speed right here. It looks like this display saying 18. We'll see where the GPS settles. So I, I think the biggest weakness with this particular kit is the speed brakes. Um, there's supposed to be a percentage of the top speed, so I've played with the top speed, and that doesn't greatly change the assist levels. So right now at the top speed, I'm getting my assist level one at between 15 and 16 miles per hour, depends on how much charge I have. When I jump down the top speed by like eight kilometers to 24, that only dropped down by one mile per hour or so. So I had basically the top speed set at 15. So my first speed break was 14 and then every other one was 15. So that was kind of lame. So I advise just leaving it at the top speed and kind of figuring out how to work with it. So with this particular kit, if you want to ride under say 15 miles per hour, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pedal and stop, pedal and stop, or use throttle in some pedal assist mode, not pedaling. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge. If you're using this to shuttle around kids, or you know, it depends on your use center, you might not really, the speed might be an issue. Uh, I'm just gonna give you an idea. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go uh, throttle top speed right now. So I'm full throttling, so you can you can probably hear, you know, it's, it's 250 watts at 36 volts. So it's not like gonna like, accelerate all that strongly. So display shown 18, feels probably about that, probably a little slower actually. So I just wanna talk a little bit about the performance of this switch kit. Got the motor and the battery here. The battery is really great. Um, just from the form factor and build quality standpoint, it's just really, I mean, I think it's a standout feature of this kit. Um, you know, the performance, it's not a performance kit, um, 250 watts. But I did compare it to the Hilltopper Sprinter, which I had reviewed in the past. And I actually kind of like the Sprinter better. Um, battery isn't as nice, it doesn't look as nice, um, but a little more acceleration, uh, about the same range. Um, I kind of wish there was a little more pop and acceleration. And from an electronic standpoint, it's not directly related to performance, but the electronics I think are just a little lacking. Um, you don't have uh, you, you, your assist is almost, it's like bumps you right up to the end of the assist level, which I showed in the video is like somewhere like you can get it to be down low as about 14, 15. Um, but if you really want to have the full top speed, it's really more like 16 until you start running low on battery. And then your top speed hits about 14. And this is in the first assist level. So, you know, and my use I had on a cargo bike, that's why I got the wheel right here. It wasn't really the best use for that. Um, you know, probably makes sense, but it was a very light cargo bike. Just really need a, a little more room than 36 volts going to uh, 250 watts for that use. I think on a folding bike, which I might put this on a folding bike in the future, I might see a future video of me on this on some sort of folding bike, a really lightweight bike. Um, that could work out all right. But, you know, it's a nice idea. I like what Switch is doing. They just uh, came out with a larger battery option, I see. Um, that promises uh, more range. Like I said, I got about 13 miles of range with this, um, which is not bad for this form factor, right? Um, and it goes in super nice and easy. Um, it's just it, if that works for your use. So feel free if you have experience with the switch kit, please throw a comment down below and like and subscribe. You know, this is the kind of content I like bringing you. And hey, I'd love to hear from you. So thanks a lot.